What do you think it means to be a man today in 2023, though? You don't even need to look anything like a man to be a man. Toxic masculinity, for sure. Women, in general, are seen as, like, me. Women have all these options. Match, 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 nonstop. Young men have, to some extent, been de-skilled in terms of relationships. And if there's a war, you've got to pick sides. So today I'm out here and the question that I'll be asking is, is masculinity toxic? Yes. They never express like their feelings. It's something that you learn from society. There's a lot of pressure put on like men. The pressures society put on what masculinity is. As men, we have a responsibility to provide, to protect, and to profess. I think that's what's most toxic and we don't allow people to kind of define that for themselves. Oh, I need to be a strong and masculine man because I want people looking at me and get women and whatever. I think that's toxic masculinity. No, it is not toxic. I believe that masculinity is needed today. When I look at people my age, like it's all about toxic masculinity. And I would just say that that's not like a good message to send. The classical role of men is not like sustainable today. Now like there will have a lot more of women that prioritize careers over like family. Not being the breadwinner in certain ca like cases can be like, makes me some men self-conscious, like feel like they're not, they do not belong as much. I think you can be masculine just by being yourself. It's like today we can't seem to get along and it's like men are demonized. Men are literally disgusting. White men dominate and exclude women. Men are trash. That's common in society. And in the absence of proper role models, men are feeling lost, lacking direction, and even forgotten. Young men didn't know what they were supposed to be doing. Most men are desperately lonely. And if either gender can't show up as their best, it can only hurt society. But in today's lack of nuance, is it considered sexist to even explore masculinity? And can we realistically find a balanced approach to gender dynamics or is it too far gone? I guess we gon' see. What do you think it means to be a man today in 2023 then? In 2023, you don't even need to look anything like a man to be a man. A lot of people that like transition from like being female to male have seen that they are treated completely differently. I don't get cut off as often. People actually care about what I say. Do you think society still values masculinity? I don't understand why would we need to value that. Gender and roles, like I feel like it's not good to be like defining what's good and what's wrong. It's whatever you're feeling like. I have masculine traits and I also have I think I have feminine traits. Feminine traits that I was thinking about, my hair, some parts of my face look like that, but facial hair and stuff, those things are like masculine. I don't know, I, I wouldn't put it like black or white. It's a really, really deep matter that I cannot explain. So now I wanted to ask an expert to see if he knew the answer. I'm Richard Reeves, president of the American Institute for Boys and Men, a think tank and research organization that will be specifically focused on the issues facing boys and men today. You mentioned that both the left and the right are approaching masculinity incorrectly. Why do you think this gap exists where only the extreme definitions of masculinity is currently being presented? It's one symptom of a broader problem in society, which is a polarization and, and zero sum. So that the right are saying you should be more like your dad, and the left is saying you should be more like your sister and in the middle are most of us and trying to figure out how to be guys in a world that's changed as time changed those roles kind of went away young men don't know who they truly are in that instance then how would you personally define like a real and mature man the process by which a boy becomes a man is always a bit more fragile a bit more socially difficult there's a reason why every society has had rites of passage and ways to help boys make that transition but i have three sons and i've tried to raise them being willing to put yourself out there to take some risks and sometimes risk rejection or failure the second is this sense of graciousness and understanding and absolute respect for women and other men and everyone else in society and thirdly i think it does bring in the reality of something of a protector role which is the reality that women on average are more physically vulnerable than men. And so it's clear that there's been a change, whether it be the perception or definition of masculinity. And so I was curious to ask those who perceive it as toxic. How do you think the role of masculinity has evolved over the years? So I'm Gen Z and I feel like we're a lot more open to talking about our feelings and the guys even, but I still think we have a, a long way to go. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's changed, but more like it's looked down upon. It's still the same, but now it is. I think the definition itself changed. Do you think that toxic masculinity is a result of biology or culture? Culture, definitely. It all depends on how you're brought up and how, for example, a guy who's raised like with women will have a different perspective to like guys raised with men. It's a mix of both. I'm gonna talk about this experiment that was done, but it was about some monkeys. There was this monkey in like a group 
that was generally like more aggressive and like that kind of permeated throughout the whole group. At some point, they literally got into like fights and they would like, I think they ended up like killing each other or something like that. They took away like all the monkeys that exhibited those traits and then the next generation was totally like fine. If we deem that these reactions are like normal and like aggression and violence is normal, that will become part of our daily lives. Why has masculinity become demonized? Merely by raising the issues of boys and men. You put yourself in a particular tribe and that's the tribe of people on the alt-right, in the manosphere and therefore against the other tribe which is the tribe who are worried about women and girls. And if there's a war, you've got to pick sides. And I think every aspect of that is wrong. There are all kinds of challenges facing young men and young women that are different as well as overlapping and that most people are perfectly capable of holding two thoughts. Because today the message that is traditionally spoken to men has shifted in especially in the media. And the controversial Gillette we believe at in 2019 was a perfect example. Is this the best a man can get? It's been going on far too long. The ads also address issues like bullying and sexual harassment in a way that seem to portray masculinity as a whole as violent, sexist, and toxic. This advert is really dangerous. It's like an anti-masculine Gillette commercial. It makes like every man look like a misogynist piece of it's and although the video became one of the most disliked videos on YouTube, could this sort of message of masculinity equals toxic have its consequences? In a recent study of over 4,000 men in Europe, they found that thinking masculinity is bad for your behavior is linked to having worse mental health. But when men are viewed as oppressors, is there even any room for empathy for male struggles? And so I was curious on what the streets thought. What do you think are some of the challenges that men are facing today? Masculinity, definitely. I don't know, people will be like, oh shoot, like you have long hair, you look like a girl, this and that. Other men trying to like make themselves more like, oh, I'm I'm a man, like. Roles, stereotypes, toxic masculinity for sure. I believe it's a big issue. It's okay if you don't want to feel vulnerable or whatever, but they should just ask for help. There are a lot of men who are really struggling right now. There's a reason why men are at three times higher risk of a death of despair from suicide or drug overdose or, or alcohol. In your definition, it seems like a man who is acting very let's say masculine might be considered toxic masculinity would the opposite be considered toxic femininity the way I said it I guess it should be I don't think that that's ever been talked about really what do you think is more common toxic masculinity or toxic femininity I think we've mostly focused on men and like patriarchy I've never heard about toxic femininity I think in general in society we're more accustomed to hearing about toxic masculinity rather than toxic femininity the word that men would use for toxic masculinity is historical crazy so that maybe that's why we didn't hear about that <laughs> women you know uh, maybe that's why you never heard that do you think toxic femininity exists everybody's kind of toxic in their own way we don't go through life the same way that men do guys can just walk out at night and be like i can go on the stroll at midnight i can't do that women in general are seen as like me. The most toxic femininity I would say is among girls. I'd say that like, girls are more judgmental toward girls than guys. And like let's say even if a girl has more traditional opinions, I don't know, if a girl wanna be a housewife, they're gonna like judge. Because if there's one thing I've learned is that the extremes exist in pairs. We need to k all men. Phrases like all men to men are trash and patriarchy generalize males as privileged, abusive, or even scum. When we say it's all men, truly, it is all men. And as of November 18th, 2021, the fact that searching all men on Twitter resulted in 87 profiles, while proud misandrous yielded 26 profiles, suggested that not only are people promoting such views, it may also be becoming more socially acceptable. This is an assault on all men. I think men in general will have to be a bit kind of snowflakey. And it's even happening to the youth. At a school assembly in Broward College in Australia, all male students were told to stand up and apologize on behalf of their gender for collective ills such as sexual assault. And although the justification was in response to growing concern about treatment of girls at the school, girls were left feeling exposed and upset while boys were made to feel guilty for being men. And as male student Vinny stated, we had to apologize for stuff that we didn't actually do. One boy came home and he said, Mom, I'm not a rapist. Why have I been forced to apologize for this? And in an era where we're encouraging boys and men to be more open, it becomes challenging for them to actually do so when they're still receiving messages that their feelings and perspectives aren't really that valued. And if expressing even slight sensitivity about the male experience is viewed as invalid, 
validating the female experience, how can we ever expect to establish healthy communication? And so it's important to remember though that the extreme and radical cases don't represent the majority of women or femininity, just as extreme examples of toxic masculinity don't represent the male majority. But when nearly half of all adults under 30 are single, and 34% of them are women, and 63% are men, it's apparent that there are extreme differences in dating struggles. And so, why are men so lonely? When it comes to dating, what do you look for in a guy then? Oh god, so much. I thought you just said, you know, men should just be themselves. They should be themselves, but sometimes themselves is not gonna cut it for me, I'm sorry. Well, first of all, I don't look for guys. <laughs> let's start there. Have you been able to maybe relate to, let's say, a straight dude's dating struggles by dating women? No. Be funny, be kind, don't be an asshole, like... That's asking too much already. I know, that's what I'm saying! <laughs> Someone that's not a pushover, because I, I can be really intense, and when people... <laughs> like, I'm just, I'm not gonna stop, so like, somebody has to like, tell me to shut up at some point. So you want to be put in your place? That's a way to say it, but like... Be a nice person overall to talk to, like... But I thought girls hate nice guys. Nice guys are mostly misogynists covered. Like, yes. they're literally girl bossing, gatekeeping, gaslighting. Like, that's what they're doing. Why do you think men are struggling more when it comes to dating? Men, they get to choose marriage. Women get to choose who has sex. Women have all these options, right? Swipe, we're a swipe right, swipe left culture. It's like a casino slap machine. Bang, 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 boom, boom, match, 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 nonstop. You are also mentioning, you know, the explanation of like, let's say, video games and dating apps is kind of a lazy excuse to kind of put the blame on the individual when it comes to men's struggles in dating. But, you know, a lot of people fail to mention things like the larger issues of economy, family lives, and the educational system. I like to actually argue, isn't masculinity about personal responsibility? Men are, I think, are reasonably unique as being about the only group who are told, yeah, it's your fault. So that individualism typically is not applied to certain racial or ethnic groups. It does seem like there's a bit of hypocrisy there in the way willingness of those particularly on the center left to attribute the travails of all other groups to structural causes. But when it comes to boys and men, oh no, it must be their fault as individuals. This is a whole new world in terms of what does it mean to succeed as a man. And when men are twice as likely as women to give up dating altogether, some men are starting to go their own way. MGTOW.com has around 33,000 members with forums dedicated to men united in abstaining from relationships with women altogether. Advocates of MGTOW believe their way is a statement of self-ownership and redirecting their time and energy towards pursuit of higher achievements instead of women is a better use of time. If this is how it is, I'm going to take actions to prevent putting myself in that position. Warn men about the dangers of relationships with women. But on the other hand, criticism can be made that generalizing all women as false accusers and parasites sites, riding on the coattails of men is not only misogynistic, but also creates an us versus them mentality that furthers the divide. And with similar movements like incels that identifies as individuals unable to find romantic or sexual partners despite desiring such relationships, it's evident that there's a growing population of men that are lonelier than ever. I've never had a girlfriend before. I'm recording this video because I'm lonely. I have no friends. Because it's not just dating. 50% of men now report having no close friendships, marking a five-fold increase from 1990. And so, what's causing this loneliness epidemic? What's your relationship like with your father? <laughs> Not the best, but I mean, I'll live. Uh, it's decent. Uh, I don't really want to get into it. I love my father. It's complicated. Yeah. I actually have a really good relationship with my dad. Do you think that kind of shaped your view on just masculinity and just like men in general? My dad is a very emotional guy in the way like he would cry in front of me and he will not be ashamed of it. My dad like kind of like shaped what I look for into a man into like, oh, I want somebody that respects me. Actually, it's pretty, pretty good. We are super best friends. It's the best relationship ever. You know, we didn't really have like the greatest relationship, actually. I kind of let bygones be bygones of the past and like I, I really made an effort to repair my relationship with my father. I grew up with my mom. My father is very, very macho. He would often tell me stuff like, you gotta submit to your husband when you grow up. And like, all along, he's always told me that he loved me. It's been like five years since I've seen him last time, and I do miss him, and I do want to see him. And even though we have our different, still my dad, I go on and... Uh... One of the facts that I stumbled across was the fact that within six years of their parents separating, a third of American children don't see their father again. 
How does that play out in the dating market? I'm not sure here. Girls who have good relationships with their dads when they're 16 have better mental health in their 20s and early 30s. It is clear that young men have to some extent been de-skilled in terms of relationships. And no curriculum can replace just watching how your dad behaves as a man. And that direct form of learning is crucial. And when one in four young people claim that they lack positive role models in their life, is this a direct result of the fatherlessness crisis? He was Tommy's father, homework. For generations, fathers served the role as role models for their children. And those who experienced this bond from a young age showed higher problem solving, cognitive skills, and better performance in schools. Parental involvement is the key to their child's academic success. Children who have both parents are more likely to be emotionally, educationally, and also behaviorally more prominent. Because even without a present father, young men could still find these male role models in domains like schools. But with only a record low 25% of teachers being men and even fewer entering new teaching programs, there's limited access to male role models than ever before. Male teachers are still a minority in your child's classroom. Teaching is just not a male profession. You need to go do something else, something more masculine. And while some research suggests that the gender of a role model might serve little importance for young people, evidence shows that men are falling behind girls in education. Despite previous inequality, now for every 13 girls who enter university, only 10 boys do. And so it's increasingly hard for people to find male role models in person. It's clear that there's a gap to fill. And so who are men turning for guidance? Who would you say is the positive male role model? I have no clue because I, uh, to be honest, I don't have any role models. I can't think of like a <laughs> role model for like male role model at the moment. For sure not Andrew Tate, like. <laughs> we can say Andrew Tate what it is, right? We see the people who are in the extreme limelight. If negative things are happening with those people, that tends to reflect the dichotomy. It just so happens that the negative stuff tends to get shared a lot more and that ultimately shapes, you know, how the, the, the things get perceived in society. What what do you think has caused this rise in digital father figures, as you put it? The search for an answer to the question of how should I be in the world today? What does it mean to be a man today? And then you get a figure like Andrew Tate. Sitting here telling men to cry more. It's okay to feel this way, that way, etc. and have no self-control. That is why we have the problems we have in the world. Very straightforward, simple answers. And that's, of course, very attractive. One thing we can be sure of is the average 16-year-old boy likes to be countercultural. So it's clear that over the years, what a male role model looks like has evolved. But why is it that one gender has been able to adapt better than the other? Women have done a better job of, let's say, incorporating masculine traits, whereas men probably haven't done as good of a job of, let's say, incorporating more traditionally feminine traits. Why do you think this is? I don't agree with first wave nor second wave feminism, but I do think that their work has done a lot for women nowadays, whereas like male issues, we've only seen like a rise in this like concern over the last couple of years. Do you think at this point then there needs to be maybe more of a men's movement? What If that's what it's gonna take, maybe this whole like women starting to work. It didn't work for women because they both don't need each other anymore. She picks up these masculine traits over time, fighting in the corporate world against men for top positions in companies. You have this kind of weird thing where men can't be emotional and vulnerable. Women, you know, they kind of have to get tough and hardened if they want to pursue that path of careerism. And it's like, where are we at? How do we balance it? The problem is that we're still in a society where a lot of those more feminine occupations tend to get less status. The denigration of quotes women's work has been to make it even less likely that men are going to want to do it. And then by extension, like if we don't pay teachers very well, that also makes it harder for men. If we want more men to do more women's work, then we'll have to elevate women's work. And for a small tribe of 20,000 in Central Africa, they seem to have found the balance. Gender roles in the Aka Pygmy are interchangeable, where some women hunt and decide camp locations, while some men cook and care for children. And even though there is still a traditional division of labor by sex, where women are typically caregivers and men are the hunters, to a point that it's not considered weird for men to allow children to suck on their nipples when women are absent. So it's no surprise that Aka fathers are within reach of their infants 47% of the time, more than fathers in any cultural group in the world. But despite the shared approach of tasks and decision making, top leadership roles have remained male dominated. But is this sort of balance possible on a global scale? 
Because even with K-pop's global popularity challenging traditional standards of masculinity with elaborate outfits and made-up eyes, it's interesting to see that South Korean culture as a whole remains highly patriarchal and heteronormative in many ways. And that the blurred lines between masculine and feminine presentations in K-pop don't always translate to other aspects of life. The country has a new president now. Mr. Yoon is a self-proclaimed anti-feminist. He wants to abolish South Korea's Ministry of Gender Equality. Because even though economic change has brought forth greater gender equality, in a break from traditional roles with over two out of five American households having a woman breadwinner has also challenged what fathers are traditionally for. Because with blue collar jobs disappearing and some men lacking guidance to advance mentally, educationally, and sexually, a healthy society will depend on both genders thriving. And so how can more men adapt and create a new future moving forward? What benefits will there be to society when men are doing well? Well, the downstream effects for women and children will be huge. Right now, we're just leaving too much talent and energy on the floor because we're losing so many of our men. More women are having to pick up more of the work. They have to do the men's work of earning the money and the women's work of raising the kids. So the mere presence of there being other engaged dads around the community is good for everybody, especially for the boys. We need to start loving men more in order to allow them to grow. Fully formed human beings and like that are able to like process emotions and to have emotional intelligence. So we can Stop being such monkeys, Sue. Straight up, yeah. <laughs> because what feminists and men's rights often overlook is that each gender's actions always influences the other. And understanding this interplay is crucial in fostering a better approach. How can men and women encourage men to be better? By allowing people to express themselves, I think that's when most growth happens. People should put more um, importance into intimacy. Like the whole hookup culture, I believe that it just make everybody resent the other. Maybe try and go back to a more traditional approach on uh, household. And to promote change, we must let go of this notion of masculinity as inherently toxic. Because it's only by doing so that we can appreciate the good of masculinity and encourage the next generation of men to learn from past mistakes. Because as always, it's the extremism from both sides that breeds toxicity. Because even in the hypothetical scenario of Barbie Land that started with an authoritarian matriarchy followed by angry Ken dolls overthrowing it to create an extreme patriarchy in response, both instances demonstrated that the extremes can only hurt the other gender. I don't think people who are left-wing ever really change to become right-wing, or people who are right-wing ever change their position to become left-wing. Just being open-minded to, like, different person's perspective. Yeah, and I think we just need to become better at disagreeing with one another and talking to one another. Because it's only by promoting and embracing masculinity alongside female empowerment that we can finally realize that we need each other more than ever. That's exactly the mission to explore the unfamiliar. Like, comment, and subscribe if you like this video. And I also recently launched memberships where you can watch this full interview with Richard Reeves. But if you just want to binge more videos, then fine, I get it. Man up for something and click on this video. You won't regret it.